Hello everyone, my name is Tony Abiola. This message is for the President of Nigeria, President Goodluck Jonathan, and the member of his cabinet. Um, first off, this, this, this video is not for any form of cheap publicity because, as some people might think, no, this is me trying to pour out my heart to um, the President and also to suggest one or two things to him. Yes. And um, pretty much, this is what this video is all about. So, um, first off, let me thank you for what you do for our country. Thank you for um, everything you do. The thing is, major because we are outside of Asorok, we really don't know what is going on there. We really don't know what you have to put up with. We really don't know because moreover it's just a couple of hundred people in ratio to millions of people. So definitely and all these millions of people are on your shoulders. And I know it can be really really weighing it can really really weigh you down. It can really really weigh anyone down. It does not matter. And that is why it seems as if oh things it, we from the outside are seeing, are seeing things like, oh, no changes at all. It has been the same. It has been the same way for the past years and it's still the same way right now. Well, I think it's time that we did something differently. Yeah, and I know you can do that. I know you have the power to be able to do that. So first of all, um, let me talk about your position. The president, the governors, the cabinet on your cabinet, you are dear, not because of political reasons and not because of your political power, but because it has been divinely orchestrated by God. You all are servants to the nation. You are living a life of servanthood. Whether you want to believe that or not, I know in Nigeria we be like, oh, God forbid, I don't want to be a servant to anybody. But seriously, for you to be up there, for you to be successful, you have to be a servant to majority. Because so much success, so much greatness lies in being servants. I don't want to talk about that. That is going to be another time, another video for that. So, you are servants and you are, you are here as leaders because God wants you to be here. Because God knows that you have something positive to do in the lives of everybody. You have something positive to create. It is not you just being there and traveling the world. No. Something positive has to come from you being a leader. Something positive has to come, has to evolve from you being a leader. You, do, you can't do everything. Focus on one thing at a time. And I think a leader's strength lies in focusing on one thing at a time. And I feel every leader in Nigeria should get a copy of... Um, John Maxwell's, John Maxwell's 21 refu um, refutable characters or, uh, or qualities of a good leader. I think we all should get that. Even those that are not leaders should read it. Because you never know what your tomorrow is going to call you to do. Okay, so now I want to talk about the powers, the governors, individual governors of different states, of each state have in Nigeria. In a country like America, and I don't want to talk about America because I don't want to use them as an example at all, but the governors of each state here in America have powers to create so many things that the state needs. They don't have to wait for Obama to leave the White House and come and sit with them and say, okay, you know what, create this, create that, do that, do this. No, the governors have been empowered to do that. Now, I want to believe that the governors in Nigeria, in Nigeria have also been empowered to do that. Now, if they haven't been empowered, I think this is the best time for you to start empowering them. The governors need to be empowered to effect the needed change. No change is going to occur without um, uh, the maximum amount of power that is needed to effect it. So, now, if the governors have been empowered to do that, so what is stopping them? I think this is where you step in, President. I think this is where you have to, um, you have to 
oversee what they are doing in their respective states. If it means you micromanaging them, I think you have to micromanage them because it just means that these governors are mini youths, mini presidents in each state, and it is what they project to their citizens that the, that is how the citizen is going to view you. The a governor should be empowered to create good roads for the citizens. They should be empowered to create jobs, jobs for their citizens. They should be empowered to, 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 to equip the schools, to equip the schools. So, okay, let me just take it one at a time. That being said, if it, it does not make sense for a, a governor of a particular state to be trying all his best to effect change within that state and other governors are just wearing babariga up and down and waving hello thank you thank you thank you for all you're doing no there is no time for that anymore we are in 2014 what is obtainable in 20 um in two, in 2000 in, in the 80s is no longer obtainable in 2014 it can't happen the world is moving the world is changing and whether we want to believe it or not nigeria is going to change with it the people whether rich or poor we change with it so um, the governors are in charge of effecting necessary change. That is what I believe. That being said, um, why in 2014 we don't have light 24-7? In 2014, we don't have light 24-7. Like I said, some things are allowed in the past because it was the past. But this is a jet age. Everything is changing. Everything is moving. Just because we are Nigerians does not mean that we can we are allowed to be to wear leaves to cover our nakedness and be roaming around the street because we are Nigerians and we have a culture. No. It is not acceptable. In twenty fourteen there should be twenty four seven light. At least by the end of December, we should be able to boast that, okay, there is 24-7 light in Nigeria. And I don't mean light that will kill lives, that will kill people. I mean light that is well protected. That is well protected. Pro protected. You can protect the current so that people are not electrocuted and people don't die from it. Water. What is stopping the tap in 2014 from running 24-7? What, what, what is happening? Why don't we have running water? Let me tell you, these are what the citizens want. These are the basic things the citizens want. Water, light, good roads. The state governors are in charge of that. I'm sorry I'm emphasizing so much on the state governors, only because the president is one. You are one, President Jonathan. The state governors should be in charge of making sure that things run smoothly in their states. There is no point having a state governor if they cannot take up the roles and do the things that are supposed to be done as a state governor. I'm sorry to say. And I know these state governors, majority of them are our daddies, but we just have to say the truth. We just have to say the truth. You are, as a state governor, the speakers of house, representatives, dear, to effect change. Now, let's talk about students in schools, in primary schools, in secondary schools. I know that there are students whose parents can afford very well these schools. Okay, what of those students whose parents can't afford wealthy schools? Is that is it because their parents are poor that these little kids, lovely cuties, have to sit on the floor and write? Just thinking about it, it's all I see, all I feel is agony. Imagine teaching a child ABC who is sitting on the floor and playing with sand. The environment is not conducive. And that, that is as if, it looks as if we have so many failures, so many students that will fail out of, the set of, 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 um, of that will fail Wayek, fail Jamb, because the, the foundation is not strong enough. The foundation is shaking. So, um, 
every to every school should have good sitting arrangements. Every school should have good libraries equipped with books. Every school staff office of the school should have good amenities. Please, we need these students in secondary schools. They need light to read, they need water, they need all these things. Once in my secondary school, I know we used to walk like up to one kilometer or two kilometers to go and fetch water. We, we should try to make life easy for these children. That is all I'm saying. Let's try to make life easy for these children. It does not make any sense whether they are studying in the rural communities, whether they are studying in the... Um, cities now governors this is now where you have to come in this is now where you have to make sure that all those so-called chairman of local governments are doing their jobs now if the president is saying to either you as governors are doing your jobs you governors should see to it that all those people under you are doing their jobs because let me tell you if they are not doing what they're supposed to do it's going to come down back to you as a governor it's going to come down back to the president as a governor and that is why when you are trying to go back a second term nobody is trying to like put you on unless the elections are rigged rigged i don't want to talk about that right now that is Another talk for another day. Now, the issue of religion intolerances. So many kids have died recently. The kids in Bono, LGDC Bono, over 50 have died from, from, from just religion issues. I read a quote. It says that it takes wisdom for Wisdom and courage for a leader to sit down and listen. Wisdom and courage for a leader to stand up and act. I'm not going to talk much on that. I'll just leave that quote with you, President Jonathan. And I want you to know that lives cannot be duplicated. Every life lost is lost forever. It's gone forever. And what are you going to tell these kids whose parents died during the crisis? Or what are you going to tell... The, 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 the parents who lost their kids during this crisis all because um, the president cannot take an action. Like I said, I really don't want to like delve into that right now. It's another talk for another day, but I think you have to act. You have to do something in regards to the killings. I think and I strongly feel the killing has to stop. Now, the issue of domestic violence. Marriages are turning to... Um, a ground for wrestling, a ground for people to start showing their strength and showing the point where their anger can take them to. I think laws should be in effect to what can be done and what cannot be done in a marriage. Husbands macheting their wives, killing their wives, wives pouring acids on their husbands. It's, 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 whatever happens in a marriage, whatever happens in a home, affects the life of everybody involved in that home. And whatever happens in your home is going to affect your society, your neighborhood. Whatever happens in the neighborhood is going to affect the society. Whatever happens in the society affects the country. Whatever happens in the country affects the world. So laws should be in place of, um, in regards to domestic violence. Domestic violence too has to stop. So many laws have to be rewritten. I don't know what laws are in place in regards to civil rights. And I think every, every, every citizen has to know their rights. They have the right to know what rights they have. So laws have to be in place in regards to that. And the lawyers have to, it's part of their responsibility to teach the citizens what their rights are. Okay, let's talk about police force. <laughs> I had to smile in regards to that because seriously, President Jonathan, have you gone on Facebook to see your police first, your police members sleeping on the floor with um, a bottle of uh, what they call paraga? Okay, seriously, it's a no-no. The police force, the policemen are there to save God. 
the citizens. Why do we have police force if they cannot safeguard the citizens? I don't understand why we have a police force if they cannot safeguard the citizens. Instead, they are there terrorizing the citizens. This is where the governors also come in. It's good to have police forces at the federal, at the federal level. Also, we need police forces at the state levels. This is where training has to be done, more recruitment has to be done, benefits. You need to up their benefits, up in quotes their benefits, increase it. Increase their salary, increase their benefits, make this package enticing so that people who know how to effect the necessary changes in that police force, in the police academy, can come in and effect that change. We need to encourage people that can effect positive changes. You all cannot do it alone. The people that will help you are among the citizens and you have to make use of these people within your citizens, within the members of the public. You have to do something about the police force. It is degrading, seriously, to me as a Nigerian citizen to go on Facebook and other social network and see a policeman sleeping like this with his tongue out and he's drooling. <laughs> Oh my God, I don't want another talk for another day, but that is just a little scenario of what is going on in Nigeria right now. Hospitals. I lost a friend. And I've, I've not even just a friend. So many people have died due to the incompetencies in our hospitals. And they say it's lack of amenities. Why should a state hospital lack amenities? I don't understand why a state hospital, a university teaching hospital, should lack amenities, basic amenities that are needed to save lives. Hospitals are there to save lives. The basic idea of having a hospital in any community is just to save lives. Now, I think a board is should be set up, and that is another way of creating jobs. A board should be set up whereby the licenses of doctors can be provided and can also be revoked. That being said, because if a doctor is going, if we have quack doctors in 2014, it's a different thing in the 70s and 80s. I will keep saying that. But in 2014, we cannot afford to have quack doctors that you are trying to deliver a woman of a baby and she loses blood seriously then why are you a medical doctor a woman is there this woman is there in pain trying her best to push okay do you as a doctor need to be told when to carry out a c-section do you as a doctor need to be told by a a, 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 a family member who has not seen the four walls of um, primary school be told how to do your job to save a life then, if you're a doctor that needs to be told how to do your job to save a life, then I'm sorry, you're not what to be called a medical doctor. And you're not what to be called a nurse. I don't want to talk about the way the nurses treat people in the hospitals. That is just lack of humanity right there. And I think every state governor has to look into this. Both state hospitals and private hospitals have to up their game. If they are not equipping their hospitals with the right amenities and equipping, I use the word equipping, their hospitals with the right medical personnel, then I don't think that hospital should be functioning. We can't look at the ratio of people dying. I think the Minister of Health should go into studying the ratio of people dying in the hospitals. Why are they dying? What cause? Cause they will say it's spiritual force. Really? Really? And it's only in Nigeria that all the witches of the world are in. The witches of the world are not in London. They are not in China. They are not in South Korea. All of them migrated to Nigeria. Okay, <laughs> let's leave that. That is just my opinion. A board should be created to look into the affairs of all the doctors that are graduating from the universities. Yes, that is my opinion. So, the idea of this video, I, it was not intended to, I was, it, 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 it was not my intention to do a very lengthy video, but, ay, 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 some things I can't, like, 
redo some things i try to do it within 10 minutes but it's already gone past 10 minutes so please president jonathan i want you to look into what i've said by 2014 i want to see light in nigeria 24 7 i want to see water running from the top 24 7 i want to see positive changes being effected in our country i know you can do it i know the people that are working with you can do this they have the power so use your power please wisely it is well with us in jesus name i am praying god knows god sees god is my witness i am praying for nigeria and i know nigeria is going to change and i know all what we want individually is going to be given to us thank you so much president for listening thank you for everyone that has shared this video please share this video the more shares we get the more it's going to get to the president's table I want him clicking on it and seeing me talking. Yes, that is what I want. So many things will be coming. I'll be doing so, so many more videos um, in relation to Nigeria, Africa, and the world in general. I guess that is what um, God has called me to do. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk. So, that's pretty much it. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to, um, sorry, subscribe to my channel, Twin Let's Talk, on YouTube. So, um, we'll be saying so many things, we'll be talking so many things, we'll be bumping heads together and we'll be talking. Uh, I have, um, my email, you're gonna see it on the screen. Um, you can send me emails to whatever thing you want me to talk about and I'll kindly talk about it. God bless us all. It is well with us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.